Hi, everybody. Um, I want you all to realize, those of you who are working on this, that this can be a breakthrough type thing, and it may break through at any point. It may be while you're in school, and it might be later. But the mechanics of this and the value of using AutoCAD is something I want each of you to see. So right here, I've just kind of sketched out the very end of something that could be cantilevered out later on. We'll talk about some wires that will connect up this. And we're going to cut through this one here, this one here, and this one here to solve for the reaction to those three forces right there. Again, this would be a place where you do not have to, you do not need to solve for the reaction. So I'm going to kind of demonstrate there. We're going to assume that these are at some scale of 1 to 1, so those that would be 5.53 kips. That one will be 3.27 kips. And that one will be 5.41 kips. And later on, I will put this in geometer sketch pad, and I'm going to work with some students and kind of drop this software on your laps and, and, and hope that uh, a year or two from now you tell me how much your kids love it. So be aware of that's going to be coming and it's for your kids, it's not for you, but if you want to borrow it from them you'll be like the people in Rwanda who are using the kids laptops that have been given to them or in Uruguay. That said, I stumbled on this today with some students working on Friday and I want to let you know all about the wipeout the wipeout command and so let's give it a try we'll realize later the wipeout will be put on a layer that has a no plot but here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna more or less right now show you that hitting an F8 here it makes it a little bit easier if I go here and I'm gonna go ahead and do a section from the end point there we're gonna kinda cut a section through here though in a second we'll get rid of that so what we're gonna use we're gonna do wipeout one of the great commands in AutoCAD, especially when you pair it up with what we've got here. So I'm just kind of going to make it, I don't really like to make wipeout linear, but I'm going to take it out here, use my F8, ortho is on, ortho is on. It's actually interesting, ortho, it's letting you turn ortho on, but it doesn't let you ortho that up. Very cool that it does not let you ortho that up. And right now you see in this, and especially if we make this a no plot layer, later on you'll see that in fact, I'm going to go ahead and put a line here. This is the one that's going to allow you to kind of sketch up and see F8. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of showing you the section here. And if we make this eventually a no plot, this green here, a no plot, or very much we can right click change its properties, change its color now to something very light, extremely light. So something that you can almost can barely not see. Let's try the green. That's not working for me. How about the green? Color 60. All of a sudden, you ah, that's nice. Now if we start thinking about our reaction forces, minus layer, new reactions, or better yet, Reactions underscore internal, better yet, capital R E A C reactions underscore internal color yellow nice reactions star minus layer set reaction. Ah, we're going to go back to layer command now and put it to our. Reactions internal. That's our layer. Now watch how this works. Line from near. And now if we say near, we can dig through, believe it or not. That's so cool. We can dig through the wipeout. That is what we're looking for. Line from near. To near. That is sweet. Line from near to near. And what we have now, and essentially line from the end, line from the end point, that line, line from the end point, and that line from the end point. Sitting down with Bond always does this to me, but it doesn't do me any much near as good as what this one does. And it is what? I, if I grab, I can grab here 
and this, and I can see that point, but I can't get to it. So what I do is I'm going to pick out a rotation point here, and we'll give that that there. But now if I grab this, and then I grab that, that's not letting me. I guess I got to grab this first and this one and this. I've got them all highlighted, which means I can grab this and bring it to shift right click the end point of that. And now I have my internal rotation point there. And of course, I have another one here. And this one is a little bit easier to fathom, but these are my two points, if you would that take one of the unknowns out of the equation. So if we think about this as being, I'll try a dtext. Justify start point, yeah, I'll put it here. And a height of, I don't know, that's big. Maybe we'll make it one, and we're gonna call it T1. I have no idea where that went. T, T1, too big. Remember, right click, properties, make it smaller. And down here in the style and the height, I'll make it 0.33. It works for me. Now you got T1. And what I'm showing you here is soon you'll be able to print this. And it'll make a little bit more sense. Copy. And what I'm trying to do here is left click, left click, spacebar, C for copy. There, there. DD edit. T1, T2, and what you'll see later, it's going to be important that you've numbered these to tie you back to the history of structures. But what you know right now is T2 is on the roll towards the goal. So is T3. We write our sum of the moments about right here. Understand because of the way moment arms work. Minus layer, new, moment arm or orthogonal distance set moment arm layer we'll change that moment arm to something of interest moment arm sure let's make it something cyan nice again it's a long week for all of you it's a long week for all of us what we've got now here is we can write our sum of the moments about that point and here are our moment arms line from the center of this and I'm going to point out one mistake I made I'm going to make this now perpendicular to perpendicular to here and what I should start to do is make these a unit of one so we get used to the unit vector however that's one of my moment arms another one is lined from the end here to the end here that is my second moment arm my third one is lined from the end here I should go from the center to the end here. And my last moment arm is a line from the end here to the end here. Now when you start realize what you have here is you've got now as some of the moments about this little round point here will be this one spinning negatively, this one spinning negatively, this one spinning positively, and this one spinning positively. All those add up to zero. That's how you do the solve for T1. How do you solve for T3? You do the same thing on different layers. This time, line from the center of that. Perpendicular to the line of force of T3, which is perp to this T3, which takes us there. Our second line from the end point of this to the end point of this, which is and then another one line from the end point of this one to the end point of this one. And then one last one from the line from the end point of this one to the end point of this one. And this is where we scream for Mr. Verholst. Because if we had done these on different layers, what we've done right now is some of, the, some of the moments about T3 that solves for T1 because T2 came out of the equation. And then we do the sum of the moments about here, which solves for T3 because T2 and T1 came out of the equation. By managing layers, you'll be able to see it and pull it. In all reality, finally, you'll see that you'll want to, in the end, watch this line from the end point here to the shift right click point filters dot X of shift right click the end point of that with a Z 
y of the dot y of the endpoint of this with a z of 0. So I can break this up into components as well. But this one here starts to, if you start layering, it starts to get you to the point of where you're going to need in a beam to be in a beam. So that's a real quick down and dirty. Mostly what we're showing you is the beauty of, let's get of, what about? There it is. It's back. There it is. It's back. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Thanks for listening.